Good morning, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. I um, am pleased to present the results of the Bone Marrow Transplant Clinical Trials Network 0803 and AIDS Malignant Malignancy Consortium 071 trial. This is a trial of autologous stem cell transplantation for relapse to refractory HIV-related lymphoma. And first, uh, I'd, I'd like to give you a sense of our colleagues and collaborators, including Dr. Richard Little from the National Cancer Institute, who's here with us this morning. This is a study that was based upon collaboration across the United States with centers from the CTN, the AMC, with support from the NIH and the National Heart, Blood, and Lung Association. To date, nearly 39 million people have died of AIDS or HIV-related complications. And given that we now have effective therapies, we sometimes tend to trivialize the impact of HIV infection. Yet at this time, the risk of non-Hodgkin lymphoma and Hodgkin lymphoma remains significantly elevated over that of non-HIV infected individuals. And in fact, the risk of Hodgkin lymphoma hasn't really declined with the availability of effective anti-HIV therapies. With combination anti-HIV therapies, or CART, that were introduced in 1996, what we did develop was an opportunity to approach this patient population differently. This combination of drugs could achieve a profound level of viral suppression, a significant de improvement in T cell immunity, and a decreased risk of opportunistic infections. And what that did was provide us with an opportunity to extend effective anti-lymphoma therapies to this patient population in a way that was not tenable. And just to give you a dramatic sense, when I started in San Francisco at UCSF, Back in 1985, the median survival for someone diagnosed with one of these lymphomas was less than two months. So we've seen a dramatic evolution in what we've been able to offer patients. In the late 1990s, autologous transplant was extended to this patient population. But still, even today, HIV infection remains an exclusion criterion for most autologous transplant therapeutic trials. And it's still largely limited to centers with HIV-specific expertise. The purpose of this trial was to see whether or not more broadly in a nationally based trial we could extend this technology across to non-specialty centers. So this was designed as a phase two multi-center trial using autologous transplant for patients with relapsed and refractory HIV related lymphoma. It was funded by the NHLBI, the NCI, and the AIDS Malignancy Consortium and performed in collaboration between the BMT-CTN and the AMC. It used one consistent preparative regimen, or combination of chemotherapy prior to transplant, the BEAM regimen, and we used a consistent management of anti-HIV therapies throughout the transplant course. The primary endpoint of this trial was overall survival, and the secondary endpoints were progression-free survival, lymphomas-free survival, uh, disease responses, and treatment-related mortality. Forty-three patients were enrolled on the trial. Forty underwent autologous transplant. Three did not undergo transplant because of lymphoma progression prior to the transplant mm -hmm. itself, and they were not included in the study analysis. All patients received the modified BEAM regimen, all received blood stem cell grafts. None of the patients had any difficulty mobilizing stem cells. CART therapy, anti-HIV therapy, was held during administration of the transplant preparative regimen and then resumed once nausea and vomiting related to the preparative regimen had resolved. All patients received their standard institutional supportive care throughout their course of therapy. This is our uh, projected 12-month survival at 86.6 percent. You can see the 95 percent confidence intervals there ranging from 70.8 percent to 94.2 percent. Progression-free survival for this group of patients is projected at 12 months to be 82.3 percent with a 95 percent confidence interval from 66.3 percent to 91.1 percent. Progression at one year is estimated to be 12.5 percent, and the mortality rate for this patient population at one year was 5 percent. In order to see how this compared to non-HIV infected patients, we performed a case control, case match control between 151 control patients identified from the CIBMTR database. That's the Centers for International Bone Marrow Transplant Research. These patients were matched on age, performance status, disease, and disease status and stage uh, at the time of transplant. And as you can see from this, the overall mortality, treatment failure, progression, and treatment-related mortality between groups, that's HIV-infected versus non-infected, uh, were not statistically significantly different. And when you look at overall survival in comparison between these two groups, again, there's no statistically significant difference 
between offering this form of transplant to our HIV-infected patients and those matched controls. Our conclusions are that patients with chemotherapy-sensitive relapse refractory HIV-related lymphoma may be treated successfully with this modified beam regimen, that patients with treatment-responsive HIV infection and HIV-related lymphomas should be considered candidates for autologous transplant if they meet standard transplant criteria, and then finally, we would argue that exclusion from clinical trials on the basis of HIV infection alone is no longer justified. Thank you.